So what is oil dilution? This video really came about because one of our viewers asked a question. He has a DPF on his diesel and he was just wondering if he should change the oil after the DPF regeneration has run. So this brings us into the whole realm of oil dilution. What is oil dilution? What problems does oil dilution cause to the overall lubrication and reliability of your engine? Why does it happen? What are the causes of oil dilution? And what can you do as a driver or a car owner to minimize the problem that you get from oil dilution. So in its simplest form, oil dilution is where you've got oil, but it also contains something else. So this is typically fuel. So if you have diesel or gasoline or petrol, if you're in the UK, and that started to build up within the oil, it's going to degrade the oil's ability to lubricate the engine. But also moisture from within the engine can also collect in the engine oil, and that can again dilute the engine oil down. So how much dilution is considered a problem? Well, it varies really. It depends a lot on your car and your engine. So in diesel cars, it's a little more forgiving because diesel fuel is effectively effectively an oil, so it's not as bad as it would be with a gasoline or petrol, getting that in your oil. But generally, about 3.5% is considered acceptable. In gasoline and petrol powered cars, that drops to about 2.5%. Now, interestingly, those levels will vary. If you take a reading just after a generation has run on your engine, or if you've done a lot of cold journeys or short journeys or cold starts, you may notice that higher. But as the engine has warmed up, some of that fuel in the oil eventually burns off and disappears. So it becomes less of a problem. So we've got to bear in mind, really, that pretty much every engine out there will suffer from oil dilution to some degree. In the worst cases, you may notice the level on the dipstick rising as the fuel and the moisture is building up in the oil. In most cases, your oil sort of maintains a set level and you just need to keep an eye on the quality of the oil. So why is it bad? Well, your engine oil needs to be a certain viscosity or certain thickness in order to perform its function. So its function really is to allow the metal components in the engine to slide freely over themselves. So a lot of these fuels will interfere with that. It will stop the oil from bonding and shearing properly as those metal components rub over them. So it peels away from the metal surface more easily, leaving exposed metal touching exposed metal. That increases the heat, the friction and the wear and tear on those components. It also increases the temperature the engine runs at and a hot engine is generally going to degrade more quickly than one that is operating at the correct temperature. So that's going to further impact the quality of the oil. As oil gets hotter it tends to get thinner and if the oil is too thin you have a problem with lubrication on your engine. So what causes it? How does fuel and water vapor enter the oil? Well the oil is being circulated around the engine so the typical point of contact between fuel and the oil is within the cylinders. So the pistons have an oil control ring and a set of rings around them to just seal the gap between the side of the piston and the cylinder wall. If that gap is too large, whatever's going on inside the cylinder can seep past and get into the engine oil. So this will typically happen during DPF regeneration. So the DPF was basically a filter that they added to catch the particulates that were coming out of the engine and then burn them off. But this was a bit of a rush job. So most manufacturers just opted for the option of dumping a little bit more fuel in the exhaust during the regeneration cycle so that that extra fuel would raise the exhaust temperature within the DPF and that will burn off the particles that it's collected. But the problem with injecting fuel into the cylinders on the exhaust stroke is that it's dribbling past into the engine oil. So you have a much bigger amount of fuel that's being dumped into the engine oil each time you do a regeneration. And even forced regenerations take this to the next level. So manufacturers have got wise to that. They've learned from their mistakes. And generally now they inject the fuel directly into the exhaust stream rather than the cylinders, which has minimized that problem with oil degradation caused through the DPF regeneration cycle. So worn piston rings can also create this problem. Even in an engine that's not dumping extra fuel in and it hasn't got a DPF on it, you're still going to have this problem of the combustion 
area leaking through into the oil and some of that fuel is going to seep by. So moisture generally that's a byproduct of the overall combustion process. So within the engine itself you've got a crankcase ventilation system which vents the excess pressure and helps to maintain a slightly negative pressure inside the crankcase to keep all the, the nasty smells, the nasty chemicals, the nasty corrosive elements within the engine rather than emitting it out into the environment. And that generally dumps it back into the intake where it's burnt on the next engine combustion cycle. So if you're using your engine cold, you're doing lots of short journeys, it's going to have higher moisture content in there. The moisture really needs a lot of heat in order to vaporize that and burn it off. If you're not generating enough heat, that moisture is just going to collect within the engine itself. And moisture or water is quite thin and that's going to run down the tiny little gaps between the cylinders and the piston walls past those rings and it's going to collect in the oil. So one of the things you can do as a driver to minimize this problem is to make sure the engine is hot. You have frequent periods of hard driving in hot conditions for long journeys and that will go a long way to burning off anything that's built up within the oil itself and reducing the oil dilution but it can also reduce the problem of oil dilution in the short term as well. So I've also noticed that certain fuels are sometimes more prone to causing oil dilution. They're adding a lot of bio elements to fuel and that generally has a lower flash point so that affects the way the engine burns the fuel and you have a potential there for some of that fuel to leak through into the engine oil. So perhaps changing the type of fuel you're using, opting for a premium supplier or a premium type of fuel may minimize the effect of oil dilution. So should you change your oil after a DPF cycle has run, a regeneration cycle has run? Well, in reality, you need to analyze your oil. If you send your oil off for lab analysis, that will give you an idea on the condition. But bear in mind, if you do that immediately after the generation is run, it's going to be much higher. If you do that a few weeks after the generation is run and you've done a lot of long journeys, that's going to reduce the overall oil dilution. So generally, if you start doing regular tests on your oil, you'll build up a picture that's basically a series of spikes. So after the regeneration is run, you'll have too much oil dilution but that will correct itself over time. So depending on your driving style, if you do lots of short journeys or you don't use the engine in a hot condition for very long periods of time, you will have a different profile to maybe someone that does those things. So sending the oil off for analysis really is the only way of determining how bad the oil dilution problem has got within your engine. So if your generation cycles are running frequently, you're looking at having a regeneration run sort of every two weeks, for example, whereas maybe it used to be once a month or once every two months, you might have a problem with oil dilution. You maybe not have enough time to condition the oil and burn off everything that's collected in it. And that's just going to start degrading further. So oil dilution is really bad. It affects the way the engine oil lubricates and you need that lubrication in the engine to maintain its long-term reliability. So I hope this video has been useful to you. It's just highlighted this potential problem that I think a lot of drivers are just completely unaware of with oil dilution. They often just check the level of the oil they just rely on the manufacturer's recommendation to change the oil every set number of months or at a set mileage. And that often is not enough if you're using the car differently to what the manufacturer intended, or you're probably a little bit more of an average driver than the lab conditions that the manufacturers have tested things in. You need to up your oil change schedule. Just make sure your oil is in good condition. The engine oil is the lifeblood of the engine. It's really going to go a long way to protecting your engine and helping you get up to those high mileages without having any breakdowns or any problems. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot the like button. That really does help us to get out there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We'd hate you to miss out on all the great content we've got coming up. So please stay tuned. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.